Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Today we are reviewing Prime Speaker Zagana Blue Green General Merfolk Wizard Legendary Fucking Badass. Her speciality is for six mana, she's a 1-1. One, one. Enters the battlefield with X-1-1 one, one counters where on it where X is the greatest power among other creatures you control. When Prime Speaker Zagana enters the battlefield, draw cards equal to its Power. So pretty much, she comes into play, draws a bunch of cards. Pretty cool, pretty cool. It's kind of a, not a, a huge theme throughout the deck, but just good general. Allows me to draw stuff. Reload that hand, bruh. Reload that hand. Lands. I do run an actually high number of basics. Whatevs. Hey. I'm not going to go out and spend a bunch of money on the dual lands. They come at me at a good price, I'll pick them up. Other than that, I ain't going to I ain't going to pay the uh the full price. I run a, a nice even split of 8 and 8 forests and islands. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8. I was pretty lucky. I picked up exactly 8. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8. Yeah, yeah. Alright, I do run a four bagger of cycling lands, the tranquil thicket. Slippery karst. Lonely sandbar. One is the loneliest number. And remote isle. Yeah, it's also pretty depressing. Dryad Arbor. Fantastic little man land. I run uh, a couple of different man lands just for the fact that I uh, I also run nature's will. And it helps me to get that one little itsy bitsy damage to untap all my lands. It's also an excellent green sunsy on the target. Mosswar Bridge. It's pretty good just all around the hole. I mean, get to play a, a free card for one mana essentially. All you gotta have is 10 power of your total crush of creatures. Evolving Wilds. Meh, it's pretty much just a filler card. Thespian Stage, copy something. Vesuva, copy another something. Reflecting Pool, taps to add something. Mana Confluence, pay one life to add something. Breeding Pool, one or the other something, counts as two somethings. Commanding Tower, add one something equal to your color or your commander's something. Ink Moth Nexus, man, land, and infectual damage. I mean, it'll give you a really nasty infection if it touches you. And it only takes 10 dirty, nasty infections for someone to die. That's fucked up. Fairy Conclave. It's a man land that flies for a very decent price, so we'll uh, nature's will it up. Treetop Village. Pretty much the same thing. Novagen Heart of Progress. We... I use this every once in a while whenever I play things like Avengers End of Car. Put a free 1-1 one -one counter on every other creature. Uh, I've also used it in tandem with Glen Elendra Archmage to keep that thing going. Not a huge combo, but I mean it's a it's a soft combo. I'm a, I'm not a combo man, but I will go I will go gentle on the combo. Mild combo. Meh. Anyway, Rogue's Passage makes something unblockable. Pick a big creature, make it go through. Opal Palace. This actually goes well with our general. I don't really care for this land. Never use it, but it actually fits with uh, Prime Speaker Zagana. Reliquary Tower. I have a lot of draw power, and I find that oftentimes I just end up tossing half the stuff I draw. So, fantastic. It's a staple. Temple of the False God. Staple. Ancient Tomb. A lot of people frown upon this land because it it hurts. It really fucking hurts. I mean, over time, it'll deal 10 to 20 damage to you on, on good days if you're using it a lot. But it also speeds you up so much. Now we get into our critters. Starting with the one, the only, Snapcaster Mage. Yeah. Snapcaster Mage allows us to uh, gain a little instant sorcery flashback. Fantastic, dude. Edric, Spymaster Trest. Hey. Helps people out drawing cards, 
shifts damage away from me, allows me to draw cards. Pretty good all around. Also notice it is both green and blue. I run uh, Fable of Wolf and Owl here, which is pretty fun. Trigon Predator. Not one of my personal faves, but he's solid. He destroys things just by dealing combat damage. And he's a cheap creature. He's blue-green. I can tutor for both Edric and him with Green Sun Zenith. I mean, he's useful. Thad Adele. She is pretty much filler. When I thought of this deck, I was thinking of just general blue-green simic-y good cards. I had no real theme. I kind of just slapped it together. Played it the next night. Turns out it actually wasn't half bad. It was pretty damn good. I had a lot of fun with it. Thought Adele, she's another one of those cards where I just I have fun with it. She deals damage. I'll search her deck for an artifact. Usually Sensei's Top, Soul Ring, something of that sort. You don't have it, I have it. Helps me, doesn't help you. Eternal Witness gets stuff back. Thassa. Go to the fucking sea. She's indestructible. She's three mana. She's a five five. At the beginning of your upkeep, you scry one. Fantastic. Two mana. Target creature you control can't be blocked this turn. Crocky. Clever Impersonator. One of my favorite cards. It's probably the not the only card I really liked out of cons. I'm kind of a picky person. When I say I like something, I really, really like it. He's a creature. Comes into play as a copy of any non-land permanent. That could be planeswalker, that could be anything. Hell yeah. Oracle Moldaya speeds you up, takes those lands off the top of your deck, so that way you're not drawing lands, you're drawing spells. Whenever I have her in my opening hand, I do phenomenal. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Mystic Snake. Who doesn't like them? A little bit of Mystic Snake every once in a while. Blue, green, I could tutor it up. I also, I do run... Dead Eye Navigator, and I think maybe one time I actually used a little bit of Mystic Snake Dead Eye Navigator stupidity. And that didn't last long, it didn't shut out the game. Nobody scooped. Did attract a little bit of hatred. But hey, it was fun. Glenn Ellender Archmage, another little soft combo. I also run Master Biomancer, so them two run very well together. Her persist triggers her to come back into play while Master Biomancer gets rid of that minus one minus one counter, allowing her to do it again. Do it again! Phyrexian Metamorph. It's like Clever Impersonator, but not quite. It's pretty good. Master Biomancer. That's probably one of my favorite cards out of that whole stinking gate crash. <laughs> Merkfiend Liege. I don't really like him, but he's both blue and green, so he triggers that Fable Wolf and Owl if I get it out. It's actually not very often I get that card out, but when I do, it's a lot of fun. He buffs up my other things a little bit, allows me to untap my other green creatures during each other player's untap step, which that can be good at times. Other than that, I really, I really didn't care for him. He's whatevs. He's, yeah, he's meh. Teferi, Mage of Hellfear. This, just like Grand Abolisher, catches people off guard, not with the fact that my creatures have flash, which I like that. That's, that's excellent. But because they can only play spells, only time they can play sorcery. So nothing's getting countered, nothing's getting, uh, well, on the stack, I'm gonna path to exile your thing. Damn it! No, they don't get to do that, so they pretty much gotta, uh, play stuff on their own damn turns. Did I mention creatures at flash? Fantastic. <sighs> Acidic slime, you know the drill. He's pretty good. Seedborn Muse. I literally paid like for this stupid card. I overpaid by like ten bucks. I wanted it so bad. There was only one left in the card shop that I was nearby, and I wanted it, so I I overpaid for it. But you know what? She's worth it. Five mana, all your permanents untap during each other player's untap step. All permanents, creatures, enchantments, artifacts, planeswalkers, whatever, it untaps. 
It's amazing. My personal favorite, Prophet of Kruvix. Blue and green card, two durable, just like Seaborn uses, Green Sun Zenith. It allows you to untap all your creatures and lands, so not permanents. You know what, 90% of the time, I only want to untap my creatures and lands. Okay, I may have a little piddly uh, mana rock or some other stupid artifact. Whoop de fucking do. I untap my lands. That's a huge deal. I get to play more shit. Fantastic. But not only that, but it allows your creatures to have flash. Again, this is a really cheap card. It's a cheap creature. It's only like a dollar or two. But you know what? In my opinion, it's got like $20 worth of sentimental value. There's just too much stuff you can do with it. I mean, you can literally, over the course of the next couple players' turns, dump your shit out. Why would you not like that? Because you're cray-cray. Come on, Fist of Carosa. You know, looking at his picture. Let's, let's check him out. He's, he's really, he looks upset. He looks angry. You know, I like to think of him as a little misunderstood. He's got a big muscles, he obviously works out, he's a strong dude. He's got this mean look, he's bald, he shaves his head. Uh, he's probably not naturally bald, looks like he shaves. But I think he's misunderstood, he's a really good guy. For six mana, he's got a decent body to him. But he turns people's lands into one white creatures. I've used them for, you know, you want a Wrath of God, well, on the stack, I'm going to pop a couple of your lands by turning them into creatures. People don't often think of doing that, but, you know, it's like, hey, you want a Wrath? Fine. Well, you're going to lose a few lands. He can also end some games with his secondary ability. Pretty cool. Consecrated Sphinx. Sweet Jesus. Dun, dun, dun. Public enemy number one. Somebody call the police. We're about to get burglarized with that guy. Six mana. Flyer. Draw cards on other people's turns. He doesn't never, ever, ever last too long. But... You know, if I can get six cards out of him, that's two turns worth of stuff. Hey, let him go to the bin. He served his purpose. That's what all good soldiers do. Deadeye Navigator, that some bitch. That some bitch. He's done so much, so much nasty stuff in his time. He's got a rap sheet a mile long. Officers, they spot him on the street. They arrest him on the spot. Not because he did something but because he has the potential to do something better safe than sorry. Duplicant. Oh my god. It's like these two are acting in cahoots with each other. They uh, soul bond together, and for two mana, I can exile a creature. Non-token, non -token, of course. Non-token. But that's a, that's a pretty strong little synergy there. Same with the six slime. Uh... Clever Impersonator if I want to reset him. Phyrexian Metamorph if I want to reset him. A lot of different uses. Duplicant is a fantastic spot removal slash creature on a stick. Progenitor Mimic, he copies things. Okay, doesn't target. He copies and makes more copies on your upkeep. Avenger of Zendikar comes into play, makes a bunch of tokens. He's pretty much a staple for anything running green. Voren collects Voice of Fucking Hunger. 7, 6, Trample, 8 mana, fucking legendary Praetor, one of only 5 Praetors. He's a badass. He's one of a kind. He's also very, very hated in pretty much any type of game you will ever play. But he will kick some ass if he's uh, left unattended. Gingitax is Core Augur, pretty much the same thing. If I ever play him, which, that's a rarity. He pretty much reloads my hand at end of turn, I discard a bunch of things, maybe doink one person to get them to dump their hand. That's about it. Alrighty, going into our mana rocks slash acceleration. We got mana vault. Soul ring. Staple. Simic signet. You don't get much more simic-y than the signet. Chromatic lantern. Meh. Gilded Lodi as they call it on the streets. Kodama's reach! It reached for Kodama. It's got that little creepy looking hand thing. 
searches you for two basic lands. Bet you know what I'm getting. Far Seek. This allows you to search for your breeding pool or an island. Now we're getting into our spot removal. I have about, eh, I think I have about eight different spot removal slash board wipe type things. Cap size is amazing. Like, if I could marry a magic card, I'd probably pick cap size because it has such amazing usage in this deck. It does work. It puts work in. It stacks paper. It, it pays the bills and then some. When I have a bunch of ways to untap my lands, this thing becomes a weapon of mass destruction. It really does. Buyback. Buyback. Corrosive and Grip. Nasty shit. Beast Within. It's going to destroy something and out of the wreckage is going to come some snarly looking beast thing with a lot of teeth. I think there's an eye in that, but I'm not really sure. Blow up a permanent. That's why it's in there. Permanent. Spell crumple. A little bit of backstory about me. I just don't really. If I ever run blue, you could always guarantee that I don't run a shit ton of counter spells. I'm just not that guy. I'm not that guy. Spell crumple is just a fun one. And I have noticed that whenever I play this card, whenever I play spell crumple, I tuck it. You know, over the course of the game, I'm shuffling my deck again. I'm often drawing it again. So I, I play it twice. It's amazing. Tuck's a general. Fuck you, buddy. Not gonna get that guy out. Forbid. Alright, I know what you're saying. I just said I don't play counters. I only have three. Only three. Okay? Only three. But Forbid does tend to, to get at least two uses out of it. I think the most usage I've ever got out of it was maybe three or four times. Then I decided, hey, discarding two is starting to get a little costly. Plasm Capture. Such an underrated card. People, why are you not using this? Okay. Turn four, you know, much less return, you know, before turn four or five, nobody really plays anything, okay? Turn four, I'll play my fourth land, pass the turn. You know, usually I'm not first. So, first player goes, plays his fifth land, plays a five mana spell. I'm always going to plasm capture that, just so I can get five extra mana. That jumps me on my turn five, from a, a minimum of like five mana to ten mana. That's a huge jump. Huge jump, bruh. It's like Michael Jordan, Duncan, Wilt Chamberlain, Duncan on that jump, bruh. Devastation Tide. Alright, so that's a board wipe, in my opinion. Board wipe, board wipe. That kind of affects me as minimally as possible. It returns all my stuff to my hand. If I replay my profit crew fix, chances are I can reset my board state faster than most other people can. Cyclonic Rift. Oh my god, it's probably my favorite board wipe. In my opinion, it's probably the best. Again, hey, it's my opinion. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one, and they all stink. Except for mine. Mine smells like roses. Sweet potpourri. Anyways, talk for another day. Cyclonic Rift. Board wipe, okay, everything you don't control. Or if I'm really in a, a really shitty position, I can use it for two mana, pop one thing out. Okay, now we're getting into our deck manipulation, our draw power, and our tutors. Sensei's top, enough said. I really think that card should have been uh, legendary back in the day, but then again, people only really run like one ever. So I guess it's fair. Ristic study. What can't be said about this? Nothing, because everything can be said about it. Skull clamp. It doesn't really pull a lot of weight in the deck, but it's also good. It's just, it's a useful thing. It doesn't cost a blue, doesn't cost a green. It's colorless. One mana, draw two cards when something dies. So, things are going to die. That's, that's the name of the game, bro. Things die. Shit happens. Draw two cards. Cream of the crop. I really like this card. All right, it's very underrated, and it's in a very, very cheap card. It's very inexpensive. Two mana to cast it. Whenever a creature comes into play, look at the top X cards of your library, put one on top and the rest on the bottom. Basically, it allows you to sift through your deck and put the card you want to draw on top. You know, when you run Planeswalkers, say Garouk, I have two Garouks in here. Primal Hunter, my personal favorite. Plus one, put a 3-3. Three, three. 
cream of the crop trigger, look at the top three, leave one on top, put the rest on bottom. That's digging three cards. That's excellent. Free digging. Doesn't cost you anything. Free digging. Just cast creatures. And even, you don't even have to cast them. Just put them in play. Fuck it. Tooth and nail. It's a tutor. What I search for, meh. Nothing in particular I go for. I try not to be a total cheese ball and, you know, flash out like Duplicant and Dead Eye Navigator, Mystic Snake, Dead Eye Navigator, uh, Master Biomancer, and Glen Ellender Archmage. I try not to do that. I just tutor up whatever I need at the time. Court of Calling. I'm not really partial to Court of Calling, but let's look at the facts. It's an instant. It's got Convoke. And it slaps a creature right into play. That's three props. I know uh, three green's a little steep, but really, it's it's not. It's not that bad. Convoke really helps. Green Sun Zenith. Fantastic. Sword of Feast and Famine. I don't run a lot of swords in this deck, just this one mainly because it allows me to untap my lands. That's all I care for. That's why I run the man lands. I will equip... Frickin' Fairy Conclave for one turn just to get the untap. Don't care. Well, want that untap. I'm gonna get me that untap. Lightning Greaves, you know, it's good. Whisper Silk Cloak, good for some dedicated damage, especially when I want to get that untap, whether it be from the uh, sword or um, what's that dumb thing? Nature's Will. All right. Now we're kind of getting into that uh, nice, good old-fashioned jank pile. First off, we got the right of replicating. Let's replicate, replicate, replicate. Spitting image, like replicate, but I can dump it if I have too many cards in hand, which I frequently do, and then retrace it by discarding the land. It's cool. It's blue-green. It's cool. Garuk Wildspeaker. Not my favorite, but he allows me to untap my lands. Put out creatures. Any kind of planeswalker is pretty much just value. Free abilities. Primal Hunter. Excellent. I've never ulted him. I've ulted uh, Wild Speaker a few times for that little overrun ability. But basically, he's he'll put out a creature if I need him to. But if I throw him out there and minus three just to draw a bunch of cards. For example, if I have Dead Eye Navigator out there, just want to draw cards. He's five mana, minus three counters, draw five cards. Five mana, five cards. That's good in my book. Fable of Wolf and Owl. I really don't push for that. I used it once the other day, like two days ago, and it just reaffirmed my love for it. It's a cool card. It's fun to play with. It puts out free tokens for whenever you play a spell. I mean... That's great. Praetor's Council. That and uh, Eternal Witness are the only two ways I return stuff to my hand. The main reason I chose this, because it says, Exile Praetor's Council. You have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. That's excellent. No maximum hand size. I'm drawing a shit ton of cards. It's huge for me. Ley Line of Anticipation. That gives all my stuff flash. One time. One time in a game, it was a multiplayer game, big group, I got the ley line in my opening hand, and by turn four, I believe it was uh, Seedborn Muse. Such a fun game. Staff of Domination. When you're able to untap your lands during other players' upkeeps, the multiple ways I got, oh my god, this thing kicks so much ass. It's, it's tough. It's like a steel toe boot kicking ass. It is an artifact, so it's basically a steel toe boot. Dream Halls. My goodness. This thing is a double-edged sword waiting to stab me right in the face. And I'm probably the one wielding it, too. I'm thinking about taking this card out. Why? In theory, it was a good idea. Allowing me to dump a card, which I am constantly drawing, constantly manipulating my deck, constantly tutoring. I'm always going to have stuff in hand, you know, allowing me to cast my stuff for free by discarding a card. But... The real danger is everybody else gets two also. And chances are somebody's always going to have the bigger gun. 
So that's just a, a disaster waiting to happen, really. Nature's will. I've been talking about you all night, about time you showed up to the party. And then finally, Blatant Thievery. This little card is super fun. The more people in the game, the merrier. The more stuff you steal. And it's permanent. I mean, you steal it, it doesn't end it in a turn. Any permanent. I mean, even if somebody doesn't really have anything out, I'll, I'll take a land. More often than not, my play groups, they, they run a lot of the, uh, the balance lands, like, say, uh, the Selesny one that tap, you put in play, tapped, return a land you control to your hand, tap it out of green or white. I'll take that. Sure, why not? Give me two extra mana. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is my Prime Speakers of Ghana EDH deck. Super fun to play. No real general theme. I encourage you, please give her a try. She reloads hands. What more do you want? And as always, stay classy, San Diego.